Okay, I want to go over your chapter 11 quiz you've taken recently. First section was actually a requiz of 11 1 through 11 3. The first problem is a parallelogram, and we need to find its area. I didn't have that 9 marked on there originally, it was on the other side, but opposite sides are congruent, so I get one over here too. The 6 is going to be my height. If I had an, a number on that up and down segment there, I could have used it for a height too. But what we were given was this one. Well, the height of a parallelogram is the distance between a pair of parallel sides. So this 6 is measuring the distance between the sides of length 9. That makes 6 the height and 9 the base. We just go over here. Area is base times height. So it's 9 times 6, which is 54. We were told to put our units in there. And since the picture had inches in it, right here it says IN, then this is square inches. Area is always in square units. On number two, there's a couple different ways to do the problem. And what we've got here is a triangle. Formula for the area of a triangle is one half base times height. You can look that up. It's on your formula sheet that you'll get to use on a test. Um, this guy up and down here goes from a vertex and forms a right angle with the opposite side. That makes it an altitude, a height. So if I could find the height, it's being drawn to the side of length 32. The 32 will be its base. Okay, so I just need the height. Two ways to get it. I can use my uh, 30, 60, 90 rules down here. That 10 would be the hypotenuse because it's across from the right angle. 30, across from the 30 is this X that I put in. And the H would be long. Well, since I've been given the hypotenuse, I'm going to use the rule hypotenuse is short times 2. That means 10 equals x times 2, and x is 5. Now, if x is 5, I can use the rule long equals short root 3. Underneath long, I'll put the h equals short. That was the 5. We just figured out root 3. So 5 root 3 is our height. This is a little sloppy over here, sorry. But this says area equals 1 half 32 times 5 root 3. If you put that in your calculator, you'll get 138.6 to the nearest tenth. Now, it's also worthwhile to know I did not round off that square root 3 to a decimal at this point. Otherwise, I'll lose accuracy when I multiply. I kept it that exact to that point. Now, I'm going to be good to the nearest tenth at the end. Okay, the other way to do this is a trigonometry. Uh, and again, all the stuff about sine, cosine, and tangents on your sheet. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if you're at the 60, h is the opposite, 10 is the hypotenuse. So sine of 60 is h over 10. Solving that for h, you get 10 sine 60 for your value of h. So I showed that calculation up above. 1 half of the base, 32 times 10 sine 60. Of course, it's the same, 138.6. And you should practice on your calculator and make sure you can get these decimal answers. Problem number four is one of the easier ones on the page. It's a trapezoid problem. And the height of the trapezoid, a trapezoid just has one pair of parallel sides, and its height is the distance between those sides. So this 6, although they show a dotted line for the height over there, because of the right angle right over here, this can also be the height. Those are the same. Uh, fine, I'm doing a video. Okay, so um, we've got area, the formula for number 3 is that I'll write it underneath the line. Area is one half the height times the base is added. Now again, that's on your formula sheet. So you just look it up and plug in what you've got. So this is area equals one half of the height, six, times the base is added, 12 plus eight. And that's gonna give us three times 20 is 60. My units, if they had asked for them, would have been square meters. I'll go ahead and write that in. Okay, number five. We have a rhombus. We know that because all the sides are marked congruent. And it's a little hard to see here, but you're given this little segment there is five. Diagonals of a rhombus bisect each other, so the other side is five. That makes this segment going across, which is called a diagonal. We call it diagonal one, is ten. My other diagonal, that's a little hard to read, but on your paper it's easy, 25. This part's 25, and 25 plus 25 is 50. That makes our second diagonal 50. 
the formula is 1 half d1 d2. And again, you can look that up on your formula page. So I take 1 half of 10 times 50, and that's 250. Units would be square feet, but you weren't required to put them in on that problem. Problem number five is a triangle problem. And we know some things. We know the area of the triangle is 200. We know the height is twice the length of the base. Well, we can convert that. Height, h, is equals twice the base to b. <coughs> well, the area formula for a triangle is that the area is 1 half base times height. So we're just going to plug into that formula. Area, 200, equals 1 half base which was uh, just B, I don't know it yet, times the height, and instead of putting the H, I'm going to put 2B in its place, because 2B is the height. Now, I don't like having the half there, so I'll multiply by 2. That'll make this 400 over here, and that will get rid of the 1 half from that side. And B times 2B is 2B squared. That's going to mean if I divide by 2, I'm going to get that 200 equals b squared. With the benefit of hindsight, uh, I could have just canceled the 2 and the 2 and get b squared equals 200 a lot faster. Now, that means that b is the square root of 200. Well, we're not simplified, but that's okay, because uh, we're going to convert it to a decimal to the nearest tenth in a second anyway. And the height is 2 times b, so it's 2 square root 200. And if we put those in our calculator, uh, the square root of 200 is 14.14. We can see that somewhere. There it is. Okay, that's 14.1 to the nearest tenth. And 2 square root 200. It's 28 point, and that 8 rounds me up to a 3 there. So 28.3. Because of the rounding, it looks like they're not exactly twice each other, but they are to the nearest tenth. Okay, the really easy problems are coming up here. Easier, I think. The circle problems. Here I have a circle with radius 10. Its area is pi r squared. That's our formula. So this is just pi times 10 squared. Hit your calculator. Uh, mine has a pi key. Three fourteen point one five two one five. Uh, 9, that would round to 314.2. So 314.2. These would be square centimeters, but again, you weren't required to put that down. On our next problem, we're showing a diameter. All I wanted you to know is you need to cut that in half to make it a radius. That would be 6. And now your area, same formula, pi times 6 squared, or 36 pi. That guy up top would have been 100 pi after I did my squaring. Um, so this is 36 pi, 113, and you got an 09 there on the calculator, so that the 09 is going to round you up to uh, a 1, 113.1. Uh, I didn't have any units, so I can't really respond to that. Okay, the area of this shaded region here. Well, I've got 100 for the arc and 6 over here for the radius. Well, the formula says you just take the degrees in the arc, you divide it by 360, and multiply it by the area, pi r squared. So this is 100 over 360 times pi times 6 squared. And we can put that all in the calculator at once. 100 divided by 360 times pi 
times 6 squared. Alrighty. Here we go. 31.4. Number four, we can really do the same way. Technically, this area out here is not a sector, but it's exactly the same idea. If I just notice that if that's 30, there's 330 for the rest of the circle. This shaded area is 330 out of 360 degrees. And what's being taken out of it is that 30 degree central angle. So the fastest way to do this one is to go 330 over 360 times pi times the radius 7 squared. And if I do that, 330 divided by 360 times pi times 7 squared. 141.1. Okay, our last one on this side, which is completes the requiz side, says the area of a square is 75 square feet and we want its diameter. Well, I'm going to take what you always do in these problems is take the formula for the area. So that's pi r squared and set it equal to the area you're given. So that's pi r squared equals 75. Divide by pi, you get r squared is 75 over pi. Take the square root r is the square root of 75 over pi. In Algebra 2 class, that would be plus or minus, or in any Algebra class, but since we're dealing with a radius that has to be positive, it's just positive root 75 over pi. Okay, this, now I'm not going to put that in the calculator yet because that's not my final answer. My final answer is going to be the diameter. Well, a diameter is twice the radius, so I'll do 2 times square root 75 over pi. Now I'll put it in the uh, calculator and 2 times the square root of 75 divided by pi. Let's see if we can get that to show. 9.77 which is around to 9.8. And this one wanted units, and since we started off in feet, square feet, we'll end up in feet. Okay, this side's get this video is getting a little long. I'm going to cut it off there and make a second video for the back of this uh, uh, quiz. I think. Let me look at my time. 12:57. Yeah, I better cut this one off.